G'day. In this episode of Minutes with Mates, we've come in via the south side of Inverell. And just as you come in, you, you'll find the Pioneer Village. So we're just gonna go for a step back in time, see what's in the Pioneer Village. The first building we're going to go into is the Goonawiggle School. It was transported here from Goonawiggle, which is just down the road. And that word is an Aboriginal word from the local Aboriginal people, and it means plenty rock wallaby. What a cool old school building. It's got that classic old school smell. Kind of reminds us of when we were kids at school back in the days when there was a lot more paper. There's chalkboards. I remember um, purple ink copying that we used to do at school. We used to love the smell of that. Scott, what does this look like compared to when you were at school? Did you have desks like this? Because ours were more individual and we didn't have ink wells when I was at school. So when I was at school, we had individual desks. We had the pencil groove individual inkwells, we didn't use inkwells, we had pencils, uh, but individual desks with an individual setup. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So we're just going to pop into the Nulla Manor Church. So this building, like it says here, was built in 1901. Um, and, and the place Nulla Manor means place of snakes. So this building was first built in 1901, then they transported it, restored it to here. In fact, all the buildings here have been transported from around the area into one place to form the Pioneer Village. So let's check it out, 1901, what was happening back in the church scene. The next building we're coming to is the Oakwood Hall. Oakwood was just 12 miles north of Inverell, and this hall, it says, was built in 1923. It was built on donations from the public. There is an honour roll in the hall, which commemorates the First World War, 1914 to 1918. So volunteers donated money for the hall. They also built the hall. So it's a completely community-run hall. It's everything a community hall should be. So we're in Paddy's Pub at the moment, um, really old place again, fantastic range of bottles and we've even got wines from Gilgai Wines, I'm not sure if they exist anymore, Gilgai's a town just down the road here, so fantastic in this old pub. Uh, yes. Jeff is one of the caretakers here and you just told me before that the Pioneer Village had its 50th anniversary last year. Last year, yeah, 50 yeah. years, we've um, come from all the buildings, come from all over the district around. The two yellow buildings, they come from down um, the other side of Warrialda. That's uh, the Gouda Homestead and the Ganooma Homestead. The Ganooma Homestead goes back to 1830. The next building, the little brown building, the bootmaker's shop, it was down in the main part of town. It was a little shop they had down there. And behind there is, we've got a couple of buildings there, is hairdressers, Lenny Austin. He was a hairdresser for many, many years at Inverell down in Otho Street, uh, opposite the Oxford Hotel. So it was a shuttle service from the Oxford out of the bar across to the hairdresser to get the haircut and go back to the pub. <laughs> in his shop, if you're down in the main street, in Inverell, you look up and there's a big black glass plate window with his name on the thing, it's still there. The building next to it is the Cooler Tie Store. It's a little village just sort of uh, out between Warrialda and North Star, out. It's um, a little community village there with probably a couple of hundred people and it's still 
viable today. There's a, I think there's a pub still out there and the red and white building is the um, our military museum and the building itself was a wing of the old hospital that used to be down in Henderson Street and it's just with all our memorabilia, all our diggers from the World War I, World War II, a couple of torpedo, or torpedo out the front and a couple of bombs that we've acquired. A little green building next roof, building next to it, the foundry building, that was the foundry. A uh, major engineer and works place for building all the mining equipment when the sapphire boom was on. Um, probably employed a couple of hundred guys. Wow. The yellow building next to it, the Times office, well, that was the, well, houses all the printing equipment in Inverell uh, that wasn't in the town here, printed Inverell Times. All that equipment would still work today if hooked up to power, yeah. so you could still print a paper off it. The Rob Roy Hall, it's uh, Rob Roy's about 20 k's out um, between Inverell and Delungra, and then you go in off the main road about 5 k's. Houses the memorabilia of, oh, we've got it, Indigenous uh, um, spears and boomerangs and axe heads and some of the old hospital equipment and Divine Studios. They were the photographers in Inverell for many, many years. Mm. All his camera equipment is all displayed in there, plus photos that he's taken over the years. The green roof building down here, it's um, the blacksmith shop. It was down on Kira Station. Kira Station's between Copeton Dam and Bingra. It's still a um, Paul Hereford and Paul Marino oh, yeah, um, yeah. stud, I think, today. The building was there and they had the blacksmith. He lived in the end of it as well and he made all the horseshoes and the wheels, repairs for the buggies and the carts and everything. Kitchen behind the Paddy's Pub is the Mepham family at Earlsmore. They that's actually lived in it and part wow. of the house that they had. Mm. And that's the... Um, it houses all their equipment, the stoves and all the old type of stuff that they used years ago. Mm. Paddy's Pub, it come from uh, down the other side of well, Bandara, Stanif, Hawaii, out that way. They lived in the pub, served in the pub, and I think there's a few bush rangers have been in there, probably. <laughs> Thunderbolt's probably been in there and had a beer. And wow. True. The old cottage across the road from it is the um, Grove Homestead. Mm -hmm. And the Grove Homestead was... Um, come from down at Bandara, but originally it come from Scone. And yeah. when they bought it from Scone up to Bandara, they bought, lo loaded it onto tra um, the old drays and bought it up. And it got the drays bogged in Bandara, so, they, well, they couldn't get it out, so that's where they built the house. Yeah, right. And then we bought the house from in there, out there, into here. So, the so when gates. you pulled it apart, you numbered all the boards? Yeah, yeah, the boards, yeah, when they, with the grove, they... When they bought it from out of Bandara into here, they numbered all the boards, pulled it all down and bought it back up. Uh, it originally had a bark roof on it, but over the, because of the 50 years it's been here, it's deteriorated and we had to put a tin roof on it. Mm. The front gates, they were the man and the horse and that was casted at the Inverell foundry mm. years ago. And they're massive. Yeah, Those yeah. Are posts yeah they're, massive. they're huge, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've on seven acres here and we... Um, we hire our village out. We've got a function centre. We've got a barbecue area. We have weddings here. We have bus tours. We have school mm. groups come through. Nice. So it's a busy time of the year now. Summer coming on. There'll be a lot of mowing soon if we get a lot of if we get some rain. If, and, if we get some rain, yeah, yeah that's a that'll thing. be. Uh, Welcome to Kulatai Store. What can I get you? We've got some beautiful stove polish here. We have barbed wire on the wall and some fantastic kerosene lanterns down there as well. Just till it up for you, your total comes to seven, nine, eight, four and a half. Whatever that means. <laughs> that was awesome, great day at the Pioneer Village. Really, really awesome place to come. But the next place we're going is the National Transport Museum. It's just up the road here a couple of k's, so let's go and check that out. So here we are at the National Transport Museum, here with Alan, and this is his car. 
So he's going to tell us uh, the story behind this car. So take away, Al. Uh, this is a uh, 1971-72 Series 1 Jaguar. Uh, getting a little bit rare these days. Um, I purchased it actually for my wife for her 60th birthday, so it is a gift that I gave for her. Uh, it does belong to the um, Jaguar Modified Club, okay, so it's not an original form Jaguar. It actually has a Corvette Stingray uh, small block 1920 327 Chevy in here. Right. Uh, mm. it, which is slightly worked, so it's not stock standard. Suspension's got race suspension and race exhaust. Mm. Uh, the vehicle at this stage, interior, is quite original. Uh, I've had to put new carpets through for it because the original carpets were pretty much rotten, rotten and we've been doing the whole interior up. Um, the car is her pride and joy and mm. it is a runner. This car is driven right. on a fairly regular basis and quite enjoyed. <laughs> um, we really have a lot of pleasure with it. Yep. Uh, the next vehicle I could probably tell you a little bit about is the Lotus. Lotus, um, okay. The, the Lotus, we're doing a lot of work on at the moment. Um, it was one of the uh, members, it was from his shed. Um, we've been cleaning it up and re-detailing it. Um, a fair bit of work involved in getting that vehicle up to scratch. A lot of work for, for Rob and I for the interior. We will be working on that shortly and hopefully we may even get it running. Not really sure at this stage. A lot of the cars in the museum do actually run. Probably a little bit of work to get them up and going and started up, but most will run. And most of the cars in the collection are actually owned by um, town people, so they actually enjoy the op you know, the option of having their vehicles here yeah. stored mm. and looked after. Yeah. So uh, when you were talking before, you said that the Lotus had a layer of dust on it? Yeah, it had a layer of dust on it, um, which had to be cleaned and detailed, and Rob spent hours of working on it. But it was um, pretty much not touched for probably three or four years, and just sat in the shed and just got dust all over it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're just going to get it up and... Make it look really pretty again and yeah, yeah. let people enjoy because there's not a lot of people that get the chance to see a Lotus. That's mm. right. So it's now added to our collections. So wow. It's quite a, an amazing machine. So tell us a bit about the history because this uh, museum used to be on the other side of town. Now it's relocated. How long have you been here for? How does it all work? We've been here for approximately seven years at this actual location. Uh, the original museum is now owned by another company. They've actually bought it and extended big sheds onto that now. Uh, but the council gave us the opportunity for this building and we couldn't let it go because the space in the area is great. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's probably too small for us really. We probably would do with this size shed again because naturally it doesn't matter what type of museum it is, it's never going to be big enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we always have a lot of vehicles coming in and out. A lot of people have multiple vehicles. So someone like Alan, he might have another vehicle he'd like to bring in. Yeah. But normally he'll take one out to bring one in to yep. make space vice versa for the vehicles. Yep. Uh, and like I said, every vehicle is cared for. We have a lot of great volunteers, which we can't thank enough. Yeah. They come through, they clean, detail, keep all the vehicles looking pretty good. Although I must admit there's a little bit of dust at the moment because we've been putting new old signs and that up around the museum. So yeah. we have been cutting timber and doing a lot of stuff. We try not to make a mess, but unfortunately <laughs> a little bit of that does happen. But the museum itself, like I said, it's been actually a, a joint museum for over 25 years we just celebrated 25 years wow. with a huge motor show which was just spectacular, <laughs> spectacular. the whole place was just surrounded mm. by vehicles people come from all over the country wow. to, to celebrate 25 years with us which yeah. was so how do you wash the cars after they've gotten all dusty with great difficulties <laughs> um we do try to get them out um if we have to if not it has to be done in here with a bucket and a chamois and we have to do it all by hand, so yeah, it is right. a it's a bit of a procedure. But yeah. um, we don't really like wetting the floors. I'm not saying we haven't, but we prefer not to. Yeah. Yeah, as you see, most vehicles do have a drip tray yeah. underneath of them. Yeah. Most of them are pretty dry anyway. But if we do get a bit of a leak, we, we can clean it up pretty quickly. Yeah. Mm. But washing vehicles is we it's not easy to get a car out. <laughs> no, <laughs> it takes a bit no. Of no. If, um, if we were trying to get you know one in the middle here out, well, you'd have to move these. If it's coming in or around, uh, it'd be a trick. It is. We've got to get the bus out because we want to actually clean the bus because it's getting a bit of a dust on the top. Uh. We have to move a lot of vehicles to one side. Yep. Then we'll skate it on skates. Uh. And then <clears throat> we may fire it up and actually drive it out. And wow. clean it. The yeah. same with the double-decker bus. We'll probably skate it out. And we went into the top of the double-decker bus and then looking out across the floor, 
It's just an awesome sight. Yeah, it's, a, it's probably one of the best views you get within the museum. Yep. It's spectacular when you're up there. And like for everyone, it's open. You can go up there any time you like. We just like people to be careful in the back stairs. They are yeah. a little bit narrow, but you're more than welcome <laughs> to go up in there and enjoy it. Same with the caravan and go inside of it. Yeah. Um, we do open up the occasional vehicle for people to actually have a look, have a sit inside it. Um, yeah, some people don't want their vehicles sat in, and mm. so, you know. But if it's if the option's there, we'll definitely give the people the opportunity to experience sitting in a vehicle like a Porsche or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You get the opportunity wow. to sit in one. So that's amazing. Great collection uh, and great that you can see, you know, all these old – it's a real trip down memory lane just seeing all these old cars that, oh, Dad used to have one of those or our neighbour used to have one. I used to have one of those. It's mm. just great. That's the thing. It just brings back a memory to everybody at some point in time. And mm. Mm. That's probably the biggest purpose of – the museum to bring, bring back those memories yeah, of yeah. Those, those little times you have with the vehicle, like sitting in the back seat and your dad's in the front saying, be quiet or, yeah. or lean yeah. on the corner. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all fun and games, isn't it? It's great fun. Yeah. 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 Can you tell us a little bit about the van from Sin City Car Club, just in a, a snapshot? Yeah, the van itself um, has been one of the um, Australian nationals. It actually won for the interior. It's wow. not an ex- – Exterior van for show. It's an interior van, so you've got to make sure that you don't mix the two up. Mm-hmm. So you've got to make sure that you understand that it is an interior van. So the outside really isn't what you would call real sharp type finish because it doesn't require it. It's yep. it's only being judged on its interior, interior, and it has won like the Australian Van Championships, the um, Nationals in Canberra. Mm. Uh, it's won Nationals also. Uh, in New South Wales, so it's won quite a lot of trophies over its time. Sadly, the van has been retired here now, and uh, the owners of the van have actually now started to rebuild another van to put on show. Wow. Uh, and I believe this van will be exterior and exterior, so it'll actually be in, in all ways. So not even the engine bay in that van has got nothing really done to it. Yeah. It's just a standard interior van, which is pretty spectacular. I've never seen a floating. Uh, mattress that's in the back mm. of a van before. Yeah. That's one of the uh, first for me. And I've been around vans a fair bit in my life. But <laughs> yeah. that is one of the most amazing it's um, nice. vans. Yeah. It's a stunning. That's cool. Thanks for joining us on this episode. We don't know where we're going next, but we know we want to spend those minutes with mates.